Hello, my name is Harry Hubbard, and I don't live in any big city. I don't live anywhere near any city. I live on the eastern edge of a vast prairie, right on this ridge, this ancient ridge. I live on top of an ancient civilization. And there are many ancient civilizations near here. And welcome to my world. This is our backyard, and I live in a cabin that I built here with my wife, our dog, and two cats. There are two creeks that run through the property, and we're very near the eastern banks of the Skillet Fork River. I harvest wood from the forest for our heat in the wintertime. I built this little wood barn here for storage and I do all of my own work on my vehicles including this four-wheeler and this trailer here. In this remote region there is no running water so I harvest rainwater through a system of duct work and I have a pumping system and that provides all of our water naturally. Here I grow blackberries, blueberries, hot peppers, tomatoes, spinach, greens, Brussels sprouts, and various things of that nature. There are literally thousands and thousands of artifacts that have come from right here. And right down that power line there, about three and a half miles, is one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of all time. Okay, I'm going to show some books that I have. These are books I travel with. These are uh, mainly from the uh, Harvard Loeb Classical Series. These are your uh, Greek, Latin, uh, Roman classics, a lot of Persian classics in here also. But I've read all these books, and I've read probably about 50 more books than what you see here. This is what I travel with. This is what I have for reference. And we'll be showing some more books here after a while. Okay, rather than tell someone what it is I do, I'd rather show you. And these books have to do with ancient North American settlements, ancient North American artifacts, and some of these books are, are quite costly. We're just going to pan here, sweep across, and these are what I travel with. These are just from my private collection here. Some of them are very expensive. These three here are very expensive books. I'm going to sweep across here. And and these aren't all. I've got about 10 more, but they're way too time consuming to unpack. I'm just going to sweep across here and just show these. All of these books have been annotated and read several times. There's Sire Thomas, Squire and Davis, all kinds of books from the from the southeast quarter, the North America. Very informative books. They document a lot of sites that are now underwater in reservoirs and uh, different speculations concerning the uh, odd artifacts that have been found here and in other places as well. But this is mainly from North America. Here I'm showing uh, several of my uh, Anasazi books. Most, uh, several of these have been used in previous videos. But uh, I'm showing here uh, some of the a couple of the, my pottery books and some uh, rock art books. I've got others that are packed uh, too far into storage. All of my books are kept in uh, plastic zip liners and in plastic totes for protection. Just bringing them out here to show. It's a handsome collection. Okay, here I've grouped together 
This is uh, somewhat my Native American language and Native American books that I travel with. I've got over 40 Native American dictionaries that I study. Everything from Navajo, Lakota, uh, different dialects of Algonquin and Iroquoian, Shoshone, Comanche, Cheyenne, Crow, Salish, uh, the uh, California and Pacific tribal languages. And the uh, encyclopedia set on the left there, I've read that encyclopedia set three or four times. Know it like the back of my hand. And some classics here. A couple of these have been used in previous videos. And some of these are outrageously expensive and hard to get. Hard to get. They, you have the, uh, the Ojibwa Dictionary, the Kiowa Dictionary, Chitimaka, Choctaw. All these language dictionaries recorded by uh, fathers, uh, missionaries who uh, went into these areas in the 1800s, 1700s. Fantastic set of Native American references. Continuing on this side of the ocean, these are some of my more choice Mesoamerican, Central American, and South American collection. Some of these have been used in videos previously, and we've got some videos slated to use some of the others. This is just what I travel with that I have on hand. Now we're looking at my, uh, a big portion of my ancient language catalog that I travel with. And uh, I've been studying ancient languages for 35 years maybe. And I've only been studying the Native American languages for between 25 and 30. I put together an entire book myself documenting 1400 Native American tribes associated with their language. We're going to start over here. That's Sanskrit, la lost in dead languages. I study Basque, Basque uh, grammar, uh, the Sumer seals. And moving here, these are my Akkad volumes. And these uh, large notebooks that you see are filled with books that I Xeroxed in various libraries. So in each one of these books, there's probably two or three <clears throat> volumes of data. And uh, moving over, there's some Egyptian texts there, some more lost languages. Moving into Etruscan, which my partner busted. Maori, Pylostis, and there's some more Sumer. And Zend, I'm quite proficient in Zend, Sanskrit and especially in Egyptian hieroglyph, probably my most proficient ancient language of which I have released a, a few of my uh, decipherments. Just pan across here so anyone can see. Showing a little bit of diversity. Like I say, all these are kept in totes, plastic totes, ready to move, ready to travel at any time. Handsome collection of ancient languages, ancient language data. This is a portion of my uh, ancient and lost world collection. And I study these cultures because it sure helps when deciphering tablets. You can't study the tablet unless you know the culture and vice versa. They go hand in hand. It certainly isn't all, but it's a large portion. And we'll understand why all this in, in, in another couple of segments. But that's just what I travel with and have on hand at any time. And these books have all been read many times, annotated from top to front to back. Here's what I have left of my traveling Dead Sea Scrolls collection, including some uh, Hebrew syntax and grammar books. 
I had about 30 Dead Sea Scrolls books stolen from me back in the year 2000. I had books from Russia, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, a lot of information that you can't get here in the United States. I've done uh, featured the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls in two of my previous videos and I'm considering doing another. I have uh, been studying the Dead Sea Scrolls probably since the uh, mid 1980s and I've actually translated uh, several of the books of Dead Sea Scrolls myself. But this is all I have left that I can, tra I can travel with. Okay, now I'm going to show a little bit of diversity, but not much. It all has to do with history, as I collect ancient coins. I did a documentary in 1997, which has been real, well received on YouTube and Vimeo. And I have a combined composite hits between Vimeo and YouTube and all the embeds of well over a million views. The stack of catalogs on the left are all from the late 80s, early 90s. That's my ancient coin collection in the middle. And the stack of books on the right is all I have left from the year 2000 forward because I had so many of them I didn't had no place to put them. My ancient coin collection starts off in about 600 BC with the Greek Empire moving into the Persian Empire, Cyrus, Darius, Artaxerxes, Xerxes coins, moving into the Roman Republic, all kinds of Caesar coins, and then the, the Roman Empire, all kinds of Roman emperors, moving into the Byzantine Empire, and then also forwarding into later Islamic minted coins. So now we see why we, there is so much interest in the ancient cultures and ancient artifacts, which we're going to see here in a little bit. Here I'm showing some more diversification. I've studied fossils and dinosaurs all my life. I've collected fossils. And I've been to many of the sites mentioned in several of these books as well as I've been to many of the sites mentioned in uh, the Anasazi books and the, uh, the ancient North American books. I've visited many of these and made some of my own discoveries as well. But everything is here. I study ancient mammals, dinosaurs, fossils, as well as uh, the La Brea tar pits. It's all here. It's all here. All these books are well read annotated and I read them quite often. Now I'm showing some books of more diversified interests. I was uh, a fan of Frank Edwards as a boy. My father was into phenomena and later of course I moved into Charles Fort. Uh, there's a couple of Egyptian books there that for some reason didn't make it into the Egyptian section. And I'm also uh, into geology I don't have uh, near as many geology books as I would like to have, but I've got several. And also many books on rocks and minerals, which we'll dive into a little bit later. And uh, these two books here are from 1704, The Travels of Gemelli Carreri. Uh, they are extremely pricey. And uh, this book here on top is from 1740. And uh, it, uh, it contains the uh, chance on how to raise the dead. It's written in Latin and Hebrew as a fascinating book for whoever is interested in raising the dead. It should be in, uh, in, in some Hollywood producer's shelf somewhere. It's quite pricey. Now I'm going to show some artifacts from the lost tomb found here in Marion County, Illinois. I deal exclusively with a forensic lab out of Santa Fe, which is notably the world's top rated archaeological and artifact forensic lab. And several of these have been through forensics enough to know that they are for real. I'll just pan up here, start over here. 
and slowly glide across. Everything here, warriors, cobras, personages, Egyptian pieces, marble pieces, Carrera marble pieces, statues. There are so many pieces that come from, from Illinois. It's unbelievable. All kinds of warriors. That artifact in the middle weighs about 40 pounds. Just sweep in here, show some of them. And this was the culmination of my studies and my love for ancient cultures and ancient history, proving that Mediterraneans had gotten here a couple of thousand years ago. Now I want to show uh, my uh, mineral collection. I've collected minerals all my life. And the ones you see here that I've polished, I did that myself on uh, my own lapidary equipment. I uh, cut, tool, and polish minerals. These are some of my favorites here, serpentine, ricolite, and fluorite. And my main collection is phosphorescent and fluorescent stones. This is a world-class collection of phosphorescent and fluorescent stones that you see here. Very nice. I know where each one of these rocks comes from, what its chemical content is, and uh, under your ultraviolet lights you can obviously see why they are in my collection. Beautiful, beautiful mineral specimens. This concludes my repertoire presentation. And I'm not pictured in this production because it isn't about me. It's about what I have, what I can do, and what I can show you. Should anyone wish to see me, there are dozens of documentaries and productions online where you can see me for way too long. From this strange land I call the frontier of nevermore, I thank you.